Okay, so hello everyone. I hope that you are doing pretty well today. Um, welcome and uh, thanks to join us very much. I'm excited to host uh, today's webinar because uh, uh, I think that we are going to present uh, a very interesting uh, and uh, let me add uh, also tricky success case with the support of uh, some dear friend of us. I am Giorgia Rossi and I am the International Sales Manager of Jexcel. And uh, it's more than 10 years that uh, we are involved in the development of uh, and production of solution for 3D surveying and mapping in the global market. Um, I am pretty glad to introduce Mr. Tit Hion, uh, General Manager of uh, ADES Geodesia, and uh, Mr. Vaiko Vileid, General Manager of uh, ADES Ge Geodesia. And, uh, Hades is our partner in Estonia. Um, as you see, they are everything is in real time. I am in Italy and they are in Estonia. And uh, um, I think that now that our followers uh, would like to hear a little bit more about you, Tit and Vaiko. So would you be so kind to introduce yourself? Thank you, Georgia. <laughs> Yep, we are quite far from Italy, in, in far in the north. It's very dark here at this, at this hour. Uh, but yep, we are a, a surveying company for, for a long time. We have uh, been involved with classic or traditional surveying, with surveying instruments, but for the last five years already, we have stepped into mass data acquisition and the data processing of course, uh, laser scanning is, is in, included there. And uh, I think it was two years ago or, or when we found Jexel and, and Georgia, uh, that was the technology we, we needed to, to, to provide our, our services and to, to, to get the widened uh, scope of the services we can, we can offer compared to single or, or, or simple uh, laser scanning uh, options. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Mike. I'm yes, I'm also uh, working in uh, Hades Geodesia, and uh, uh, in these years I try to develop and try to find the new ways to make reality capture and uh, data processing. And yes, as did uh, mentioned two years ago, around we found uh, also Chexel and. Uh, Right now, we try to uh, put it uh, in our everyday life, and uh, right now it's going like that. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for your introduction, and it's uh, really a big pleasure for us being you, being today with you to present this uh, this case. Um, just a few general information before beginning. Um, first of all, uh, uh, we apologize in advance with our attendees if you might have some delay uh, in the presentation and also in the uh, video showing because uh, as you can easily understand, uh, the network is uh, overload as always. Um, if you have some question, you can uh, submit them uh, in the uh, question box. Um, we will try to uh, follow up uh, in real time, but uh, uh, don't worry because at the end of the presentation, we will have also some time for a Q&A session. Um, the webinar will be recorded for your reference, so don't worry if you uh, will join us later or if you uh, will miss something because you will receive the record uh, um, of the webinar. So um, let me go very qu quickly through today's agenda. Um, we will have a success case introduction, so um, Vico and Tit will provide some information about where we are, um, who is the customer, um, which uh, have been the needs, uh, the challenges, and the goal of the project. Um, why Heron has been the right solution to carry on the project. Um, we will then pass inside the process workflow, and we will see together the result. And then we will have the uh, Q&A session. 
So um, I know, guys, that uh, you are very excited to learn more about uh, today's story. So um, I don't want to waste any more your time. Uh, Tita, uh, can you pr please explain where we are and uh, um, which has been the main goal of the project? Yeah, uh, Georgia shows a slide where you can see on the left hand uh, city of Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. Uh, it's, it's a seashore city and uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the seashore, the, the soils are quite tricky to, to, to build all kinds of, of houses and, and utilities uh, down in, in, deep in the, in the ground. And in the middle, you see uh, nature, the site, uh, the manhole is opened. Paiko and his assistant are, are just preparing to, to proceed with their jobs. But the case, they are not simply wasting their time there. Uh, it was a serious case. Uh, our uh, commissioner or our client, client was a consultant company who has a uh, uh, a goal to solve a sewage problem of a new real estate development. It was quite close there. But as the, uh, if you are developing new real estate, there always will be problems with uh, rainwater. When we cover land with asphalt or pavement, the rainwater, uh, we have to gather it and, and to conduct it somewhere else. And so, uh, uh, there were no good solutions. Okay, rainwater you can conduct to the sea, but not the sewage. And uh, there was a big problem for all this development. Uh, they couldn't, they were not allowed to, to conduct the sewage and rainwater into one uh, free flow. They had to conduct it in a, in a uh, collector, in the sewage collector, but was quite far away. Uh, and the only chance, the only reasonable chance was to, to connect it in a, in a manhole or in a shaft or chamber, how can, how can it be told? Uh, but the authority of uh, water and sewage supplies of city of Tallinn, Tallinn Avesi, has absolutely no idea, no information what is going on on there, what pipelines are connected to there, what are the elevations, what are the diameters, nothing. And uh, uh, they had, the client has to solve the problem how, how you can con uh, connect the, your pipeline into this chamber if you know nothing. And then they knew that we are uh, doing all kinds of things with, with laser scanning and we have uh, very big park or, or fleet of all different equipment and they called, can we help? Then we answered, uh, sure we can. We have to think uh, how, how we can do it, but we're sure we can. And we did it. Okay. Uh, yes. Very uh, here, before then the, he contact with us, they also try to find information with the GeoRadar but they don't get any good information and yes, they must find some new solutions and then they call to us. Yeah, that's nice because I think that uh, the problem is um, uh, complex and the, I mean, uh, the, the, the people before contacting you, of course, has tried also to follow up uh, and uh, they try also to use other technology like, uh, as you said, the Vico di Georadar. And uh, um, I have seen uh, during uh, the, the setting up of the presentation that anyway, I, I have been a little bit uh, surprised to know about this, uh, uh, you know, um, drain water system, about this uh, uh, sewerage system of the city of Tallinn that uh, has been built, uh, I mean, many centuries ago. And uh, uh, it has been also rebuilt and remodern in the different uh, centuries. So that's um, it's very interesting. Also, the case itself, especially because of the complexity of the of the case in which a different kind of technology has been tried uh, before, of course, uh, getting to you. 
uh, with uh, this um, laser scanner technology. And uh, um, so um, we can just review who did commission the project because uh, Tit, you have just uh, uh, explained, but uh, just a quick resume on how uh, the customer, I mean, uh, uh, has reached you in order to fix uh, all the project. Yeah, just once more, we on the on the right and there a service provided with our equipment and our knowledge, the customer who was uh, actually delegated the, the problem, the problem of the uh, real estate developer and uh, utility owner Tallinn Avesi, who owns all the sewer, sewers and, and water supplies, they had no information and also delegated to the to the customer car project the consultant company to solve this problem and they were how to say in the tank they had to do something they had to 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 uh, pro provide their service to their customer and then we uh, we helped them to provide their service okay so um as you said also before that uh, um, the customer has not the, 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 the I mean the, the yeah the society who manage the the water and everything they did not have any kind of documentation of the underground network so the main goal uh, one of the main goal was setting up uh, uh, the 2d CAD drawings of the pipeline in order to project the new infrastructure but there are also other uh, needs and goals of this project yeah this uh, to the, the CAD drawings is the is the usual way engineers and architects you know, at least so far are, are, are providing uh, this is the input data to them to to to, to create their solutions <clears throat> but there is also uh, always a question of of time and money and uh, uh, there is a big problem uh, why these deep manholes and shafts because it's dangerous. There might be poisonous gases, and uh, if you don't know absolutely mm. what, what's going on there, we cannot let people in. And uh, if you are uh, uh, dropping or descending several people there, it's it's too it's too expensive, it's too time consuming. And what can you do if you have no equipment? By the way, this is now the CAD drawing, the output of surveying company. Uh, what is what is uh, what can be used by a designer or, or an engineer who has to solve uh, the sewer or, or whatever uh, utility uh, design solution. And uh, you see manholes there. You see even a bright green. Uh, uh, line on the on the left hand on the zoom in uh, map where the, where they found something by geo radar but it, it was not the right information we found afterwards it was something something strange and they have only you see numbers at the manholes usually data is is in uh, X Excel sheets, uh, just uh, these numbers of manholes refer the data in the Excel sheets, but uh, soon you'll see what data we can uh, offer or provide uh, describing such a chamber we have to provide data from uh, to our customer. Mm -hmm. and yeah. also, good point uh, that uh, this whole system is working uh, all the time and uh, the surveying must do uh, during the water is uh, flow in the pipes. Water flow is uh, less water flow, in other words, it's extremely dangerous, yes. even for equipment. Yeah, but yeah, of equipment, course. Equipment, but people is people and uh, it's yeah. quite dangerous and pipes was very... Uh, there is a big flow inside there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had also um, some kind, you know, of limitation in terms of uh, when doing the job, not only for the safety reason, as uh, you teach said, because of the gases and so on, but you had also some mandatory time in which you could do the job, because of course uh, we are talking about uh, a, pip a pipeline that is full of water. So it's not that uh, you can do the job. Uh, 
when you like or in the best i mean weather condition or something like that and uh, let me oh sorry pass to this because perhaps uh, this okay uh, this is a video uh, taken it's a camera uh, 360 camera it, uh, that's why it's a bit strange uh, up there but now the camera is descending into the manhole it's i think one meter or, or 90 centimeter diameter concrete manhole that is usually uh, used or was used at soviet era and it's uh, descending to the chamber i think it was some two or three meters of such yeah two uh, two, two, two and meters half, okay, two yeah. and a half meters of the, of the manhole and then uh, and there is also seen the, the stair but the there is no because if you yeah, you, you touch it it just fell yeah, down and uh, it's not uh, <laughs> there is nothing secure if you if you try to to descend by the stairs you never know does it keep you or 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 cracks and then you are down yeah yeah because yeah. it's uh, the stairs are made up by a very damaged iron and so you don't yeah. know if uh, yeah yeah they are practical uh, or not of course no this is the security uh, uh, now we're down already you see uh, the chamber uh, the, the measure yes yeah, that it's um, it's uh, a, an interesting but also very complex site of course especially, especially to reach out uh, of course Um, let me, okay. A, a couple of, couple of meters, some two, three meters is, is the, uh, we see afterwards the cat drawing. Okay. Yeah, it was a, a bit of a connection, uh, inter internet. Yeah. This, yeah, now yeah. we're back, I, I hope. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I was in fact trying to say that uh, there was some kind of little connection and uh, okay uh, i think that we can hear you but we cannot see you okay, i don't know if... the camera off to, to to keep more uh, more uh, uh, way for for, for for text and and, and sounds and uh, i can yeah. turn it on but we can maybe it on. Yeah. if it's coming also in problem with the connection then i shut down now now it's okay no 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 okay N now you you come back now you are now it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, well it, it's something that happens when you do, you know, real time web uh, and especially in different parts of the world and especially in this period where there is uh, a very huge usage uh, um, of the um, of the network. So just to resume what uh, I mean, uh, Tit has said before, he has introduced the, uh, the site explaining that they had to pass through this uh, a small hole of about 91 meters diameter and then they go down up to around five meters and the problem is that uh, a person could not uh, um, going down because uh, there were stairs as you have seen in the movie this uh, okay call stairs it's uh, nice but uh, yeah they are stairs iron stairs but the problem is that they are pretty damaged and so also the safety of the operators were not guaranteed. And so they, they had to find um, a solution that could work uh, from the top uh, without, I mean, uh, having uh, the uh, presence of the person mandatory on site because mainly for safety reason. So th this is, I think, one of the main characteristics uh, um, of this site. And uh, I'd like to um, present a little bit uh, uh, the workflow that uh, um, has been uh, um, followed. So um, the on-site acquisition has been uh, done with Aaron, 
that is a more, uh, which is a portable mobile mapping system. And uh, it is very um, easy to use and install. It's composed by a capture head that in integrates uh, um, a laser scanner with uh, an RGB camera enriched by a unique real-time algorithm um, that has really changed the approach of doing the survey, especially we can see it later. Um, quickly and very accurately, in a matter of minutes, uh, the 3D point cloud of the site is created and uh, uh, data are collected in continuous, uh, continuously sorry, while uh, um, moving in the demand hall and uh, um, no calibration or initialization procedures are needed, neither hard setup. Um, it is adaptable for any kind of environment uh, you can use inside, outside, as you have seen. Uh, you can use it in daylight or darkness, uh, and uh, you can access to those sites that normally are off limits, like this one. Um, I think that the real outstanding of Aeron is the post-processing software suite. Um, Aeron Desktop that enables to optimize the mobile mapping trajectory and uh, later Vico and Tit will provide more information about this. Um, then uh, the second software is Reconstructor uh, that provides um, specific and several features to manage, uh, edit and prepare the point cloud uh, for the uh, final output extraction. Uh, one of the output can be uh, a 2D map of the site, of course, that can be easily shared. Uh, through the um, uh, 2D viewer, Go Blueprint, or you can directly export for third-party software or web sharing platform, as for example, Recap and Revit. We will experience it later, as for example, uh, um, uh, Edgewise and Verity, as uh, a web share platform, as Orbit GT or Faro Web Share. So, um, you can have a lot of uh, possibility of uh, uh, exportation and uh, integration with the other software platform. And uh, um, I'd like now to invite Tit to, uh, I mean, spend some words about the, 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 the um, concretely speaking, about what they have done on site. Yeah, you can see the, the equipment or accessories what we what we used. That was a kind of telescope, uh, and the scanning head was connected to this and the cabling. And now you see it descending through the manhole. And on the right side the pictures, you see how it looks like not not in a working position, but but in the in, in the office. Yeah. That's it. Yes, and uh, um, Aaron Light, sorry, Aaron Light Capture Head, we can also review the movie, uh, can be easily, in fact, mounted on extensive pole, reaching up to six, seven meters. And uh, there is also a complete set of accessories that make you use Aaron Light in different way. And uh, um, furthermore, Aaron can be used upside down, as you have shown. Um, so you can use Aeron in different kind of configuration. Um, uh, the Aeron capture head can be easily mounted uh, not only on the pole, but also on a backpack that is available in two different configurations, as you can see in the slide. And uh, you can also easily mount uh, Aeron on vehicles, um, trolley, quad, uh, car, bicycle, using uh, a specific um, uh, accessory that is called car mount in order to automate, automate uh, the in, entire on-site acquisition process. Now, let's jump back to the main uh, workflow. So, um, if you might need further details about uh, how Aeron is, I mean, the configuration of Aeron, the different accessory of Aeron, we will be pleased to provide this information. Um, coming back to our workflow, we can say that uh, um, uh, after the on-site acquisition, um, let me show you this uh, movie. Um, 
this is the resuming of the acquisition. Tit, would you like to spend some words? Because I think that this move is pretty impressive to understand uh, everything. Let us uh, capture uh, with a drone and take this uh, point cloud generated from photogrammetric uh, methods of data acquisition. That means this is on ground, the other is underground. Yes. <laughs> and underground, yes, we use this hair on light and we put uh, uh, together two, two clouds. It's quite easy and uh, then can use all this information as uh, one uh, data, 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 data set. Data set and, uh, it's very, very okay, very easy. Yeah, what, what I like uh, of this project, but also on this movie, is the possibility to integrate uh, what is uh, on the ground and what is underground uh, in order to have a complete knowledge, because of course it is not possible to understand uh, uh, what is going on underground if we don't have the knowledge of what there is upstairs. So having the chance to have uh, all this data merged together from the top uh, and also from the ground, from the underground, uh, I think that uh, uh, for the project manager and especially for the person who has to project uh, the pipeline and everything uh, is very important. Uh, so that's, um, this is what I like of this because it's really uh, transfer, I think, the feeling of the importance of the, and also the complexity of this job. And uh, uh, after the acquisition, the data has been processed in Aaron uh, Desktop. I leave to you, Vaiko and Tit, uh, okay, to explain a little bit more about this uh, first uh, processing step in Aaron Desktop. Yes, it's also um, quite easy and understandable. You just uh, export uh, uh, data from uh, scanner to the PC and import it here on desktop and here you can uh, process whole data what you have you can manipulate it you can change and uh, make corrections and uh, right now our <coughs> surveyor just uh, uh, control that everything is going right and if it's ready then also it can be export into ordinary cloud format and especially right now we export it uh, like uh, last file I remember or E65 E57 E57 and uh, then we import or export it into the Revit but yeah right now there is very could you can remove uh, bad uh, stations or bad clouds and uh, then you can just export the uh, important part what you want uh, and what is uh, good quality and uh, so on because there is a uh, yeah very uh, not noisy but uh, moist in the air yeah. and it's uh, quite moisture in the air yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, it doesn't give you good point clouds there is a lot of noise yes noise. And then we convert it to, to Autodesk format and import it into Revit, where we make uh, to the drawings to the client. And uh, planes and sections, and uh, that's it work. <laughs> yes, here is just the visualization of uh, how the data looks like in Reconstructor, just to give some general information. As we said before, the top of the hole is around uh, 90 centimeter diameter and then you went down of about five meters with the extensive pole and the data from reconstructor has been imported i can leave to you vaiko the the speech the floor uh, so that you can finish to uh, describe the workflow uh, of the job done in in revit to create the, the cad drawing the 2d map Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, in our side. It's quite ordinary work right now, uh, because there are many clients who don't uh, or can't use point cloud data directly. They want mm -hmm. to the drawings. This is uh, ordinary and classic way how they manage the data. And there is yeah, we use Revit. There is also possible to use any other uh, maybe Archicad or. Mm, 
SketchUp or something like this, when you can import it uh, and make uh, drawings. Uh, there is also very good to see that uh, there are not only one uh, uh, hole, what is coming uh, to the top on the ground, surface. on the surface, yeah. there is a two, uh, but uh, another uh, well is closed and uh, can't open, but here is also can see uh, some points where the hole is and it can be thrown in the, to the drawing. And uh, yes, it's quite old the, the construction, and it's not uh, straight lines, and it is uh, quite uh, tricky to draw because in every different different level, the wall is uh, different mm -hmm. position and place. It's <laughs> we we need to make quite a lot of two uh, D plans and section to the client. To understand exactly what uh, there is. Also, yeah, we share to the client also this video, what is very easy to see, but the uh, point cloud, yeah, they can't use because they don't just have this kind of software. But after this, we also show to the clients what information we have. Uh, they think about it, maybe they also should uh, use point cloud directly because there is a lot of information. What, uh, I just I can't draw in the drawing. It's yeah, just exactly. I I agree with you because it's um, I just jump to the slide of the final drawing and I agree with you, Vaiko. I think that one of the still main problem is that not all the people are familiar with 3D. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone can talk about 3D, about point, about at the very end uh, what the uh, final user want are 2D drawing in CAD, as you said, AutoCAD, ArchiCAD, all plan from Reconstructor. You can go, you can enter in different uh, CAD environment. Uh, but I agree with you, there is this still limitation of people who uh, need uh, and want to work with 2D. But on the other side, it's important what you have underlined that is the um, um, the information that you can get from a 3D point cloud that in a certain way you lose if you consider only the 2D drawing. Uh, so it's important also in a certain way to transfer and to educate the final user and the final customer about this point cloud because they really can enrich the knowledge of the site and the information that they can get from this kind of data. So these are some uh, uh, final drawing of the CAD uh, work that you have done. I think that this is the, the plan view and this is the section, right? Yeah. There is a two different wells what we have investigated and we make yeah, two different drawings. But yeah, this is only two, but they are very important to the client. Without this information, they can do nothing. Or more paid. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of euros for, for such a, some other solutions but, uh, or, or, or who knows who much, how much it does it uh, cost. But now they have at least uh, an option to, uh, with a, a certain uh, cost to, to, to solve their problem. Exactly, exactly, because I think that UTIT had a, has underlined uh, another very important aspect, that is the cost of uh, the activity of the project, because uh, anyway, at the end, uh, we have to, uh, I mean, uh, um, consider the cost of an operation, not only, I mean, the possibility of output or need and goal, but we must be very concrete. So the possibility that the customer has uh, in mind a solution that can fit uh, the need, the goal, but also the budget uh, that they have, I think that uh, it's important because this is the right compromise between uh, uh, the job that you have done and also the investment that you can put in it. So there are a lot of things in this project, uh, I mean, all the things in this project that uh, um, are considered uh, from the technical point of view, from the investment point of view, and also especially from the uh, customer satisfaction that is, of course, another, uh, I mean, one of the main important things in order to be winning. Um, so uh, just uh, let's jump to a sort of uh, uh, resuming about uh, 
what is Aeron, this portable mobile mapping system that has been used. Um, we did not say it, but it's a SLAM-based uh, uh, solution uh, that we have seen enables to move uh, uh, everywhere. Um, it is only two kilos, so this is also the reason why it's very versatile and easy uh, use Aeron in such kind of environment, so you can uh, easily adapt Aeron to a different kind of job or different kind of stuff. Um, Aeron can be used con uh, continuously, so you don't need to stop uh, somewhere. Uh, so the surveyor or the operator is very uh, free and comfort to uh, move freely and easily around. And uh, of course, uh, as uh, Tit said, this uh, sensibly influences the operative cost. First of all, because you don't need to hire a huge team of surveyors to do the job. You can uh, work uh, uh, alone and you can do a single survey that uh, can be carried on by one person. So not multiple survey carried on by a specialized team of different people. And uh, um, I'd like also to underline another topic that uh, Tit has underlined, has uh, said before, that is uh, the um, topic of the time. Um, we need to be fast, especially in the, um, I mean, in, in, especially in the moment in which we are living now, we must be fast. And so uh, having a solution that uh, does not need hard setting up uh, or strange and long calibration in initialization procedures, but you just uh, switch on the system and then uh, you wait for a few seconds for the warming up and you are ready to work, it's important. Um, you can reach uh, also uh, a good range because we are talking about a solution that can reach 100 meters in terms of range. And also I think that the versatility of Aeron is one of the main characteristics of the system itself because we have seen you can use it uh, on a pole, uh, on the backpack, upside down. And uh, um, I know that uh, our guys from Hades uh, has used uh, Aeron also in other different configuration in mobile system, in mobile configuration. So you can really have uh, uh, a solution that can be used uh, in different kind of environment and also in a different kind of way. Um, here there are some technical information about Aeron. I don't want to enter inside these uh, technical details. Of course, uh, if you might need them, some information, we will be pleased to provide. Otherwise, you can find this technical information on the website or we can provide directly them uh, to you. Um, just a few words about the uh, rugged control unit that is provided with Aeron uh, that uh, uh, enables to uh, visualize in real time what you are surveying. So you can have a quick preview of what you are doing, um, what you are surveying, uh, uh, if the survey is good, is not, if you have lost some parts. Uh, and I think that also in terms of uh, time saving, this is very important because you can have a first control of what you have done on site. So you don't need to wait to come back to the office that perhaps is in the other part of the city or region. So you can save time also uh, to uh, check and control the data that you have just acquired. Um, you have totally your hands free because uh, you can use this bracket, this, sorry, this shoulder harness, and so you can work with your hands free. And uh, another thing that uh, our user like is that Aeron is very compact and easy to transport. So you can uh, transport Aeron in the uh, handheld luggage or in the backpack, as we have seen uh, before. Uh, we have a configuration in, by which you can directly also power Aeron. And uh, um, before uh, moving to the uh, Q&A session, um, I'd like just to present the Aeron family, just to give you a complete panorama of what uh, Aeron uh, uh, is and how it is provided. Um, today, we have seen an example of this uh, smart application that has been carried on with Aeron Light Color. Um, Aeron Light is also available in the not color configuration uh, that is mainly used for mining, 
application, underground application, and all of those applications where color normally is not required. Um, the Aeron family has been enriched this year by the Aeron MS Twin, that is the revolutionary uh, dual LiDAR sensor. Um, it's usable in many different environments, uh, indoor, outdoor, on vehicle, by walk, especially for huge and very complex areas like multi-floor building, like uh, areas where you have to move from indoor to outdoor, and uh, um, this kind of uh, uh, yeah complex environment. Um, so um, I think that. Uh, for today's uh, we have done and um, I want to thank uh, you very much to join today's webinar. Um, I want uh, really to particularly thank Satit and Vaiko for joining us and especially for sharing with us this uh, application and this uh, success case. Um, I am glad to anticipate that uh, together with uh, Hades Geodesia, we are going uh, to organize other uh, success case uh, uh, webinar next year. So just uh, follow us. And now I think that we are pleased to reply to uh, some of your questions. Uh, um, we will start immediately with them. Uh, in case uh, we would not have enough time, don't worry, because we, can, uh, uh, we will be back to you uh, afterwards, of course, um, by email. Um, so um, just uh, the first question uh, for, I think, uh, um, and I, I ask to Tit and Vaiko uh, to reply. Um, uh, and before this, uh, I'd like to uh, ask to Tit and Vaiko if they have something to add about uh, this project. Uh, uh, just in general, if you have something to add about the, the project that you have just presented. I, I think that uh, that we solved uh, a big problem not only to to our direct customer but uh, to a much wider uh, it has much wider meaning because now this really state development can proceed at all they were blocked because they had no solution it means sometimes quite detailed and uh, narrow applications narrow cases that we not stepped in can and open much wider perspectives to 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 the others and uh, and I think this time it was just like like this that means uh, maybe they even don't know what solved their problem what what kicked the the plot off the uh, that they can uh, that they can uh, proceed with their development and their their life yes. Yes, of course, of course. And uh, um, some people are interested to know how long did you take on site to do the uh, the survey? This uh, survey, uh, direct survey, take around uh, five minutes. But yes, there is some preparation, preparations, and uh, uh, but in uh, on the site it take. Uh, half an hour or one hour and it's uh, done because of, yeah we have only two holes and uh, okay you have preparation for the camera which uh, uh, <laughs> this is yeah. 10 hours or so yeah we, because yeah if we open this uh, hole then we also uh, made uh, 360 video what we show show you and we make scanning and uh, we fly with a drone and it's totally take time one hour I think in the work the workflow of, of, of this maybe this kind of uh, you know how to say assessment with camera to find out what's going on there before you descend the, uh, the scanner in might be also useful if, if, if you don't know but if they need it in the in the same time in the same uh, working hour but, uh, but it can be maybe even done uh, in preparation form to be absolutely secure sure you can provide uh, your, your task. 
Okay. And uh, um, another question is, how did you use the control unit? Because we have seen that Aaron is provided with the control unit, so people are a little bit curious to know how did you use, I mean, where was the control unit? How did you set up everything, uh, I mean, to, to, to do this job? Control unit laid down on the ground, and we just, uh, uh, the, the, the scanner head is, uh, putting down and uh, uh, then we can make a survey because we also uh, need to because the hole is so deep we also need uh, to put our hands in the hole to get all information and it's yeah there is also need to rotate the scanner head and it uh, take a little bit uh, uh, time and it's a little bit confusing but yeah the scanner unit laid on the ground and then I laid also on the, on the ground and see the control unit and to see what is the result from the screen. Okay, and uh, um, another question is, um, if you have your reference, the project, uh, the job uh, using a GNSS uh, uh, topographic uh, network, uh, people are interested to know if you do reference the data. And yeah. if you, okay, and also how, how did you do that? Yeah, we, uh, in this case, we don't use uh, uh, GNS uh, points, uh, but ordinary, yeah, if we are taking measurements, uh, measurements with Heron, we put our points on the ground and uh, uh, put all uh, in the one georeference system. But in this case, we use uh, present uh, topography and we take coordinate points from there and rotate all in the same system because maybe there is also common if we come differences if we use our gns uh, network and it's maybe this match with before done uh, project and uh, if we use uh, present uh, drawing the information then we have all in one system and uh, in this case it's uh, the only way to do it you saw the the survey maps uh, uh, and we used uh, this time yeah the the reference data that was connected or referred to to this survey. But of course, uh, uh, you can use the reference points. Are they laid with GNSS total station or, 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 or what, whatever you can use it to, 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 to get your data set to your reference? Also, we have done this kind of uh, uh, thing, but not putting on the, GP, uh, on the GPS uh, the points, but uh, we Fly with a drone and make photogrammetry, and from photogrammetric uh, uh, photo, we take control points to reference the Heron data to the same system with the drone data. As the drone is also nowadays already an RTK robot, that means the data sets uh, captured with drone is also uh, equal already to, to RTK. Uh, points and if it's not a millimeter case, then you can really use such data sets to, to get your data to your reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this is related also to another question that is much more general. So, uh, what about your referencing? How I can your reference the data? And I think that, uh, yes, uh, you have just uh, um, explained some of the possibility that you have uh, um, in case you might need to reference Aaron data that uh, are usage of control point. Uh, generally, um, we have specific procedure to reference the data. We can use control point, uh, uh, ground control point, or total station point, or we can use uh, uh, other scans, like for example, the UAV one that you have used, and we can take, considering some uh, uh, reference point, or what we can do is also using uh, um, scans as constraint. That means uh, we, uh, in the software here on desktop, we had the chance also to use scans, uh, any kind of scans, uh, uh, mobile, uh, UAV or static, uh, as constraint, as reference area on which we can mount and adjust uh, air on trajectory. So we have different way of uh, um, georeferring the data. Um, I have another question for you, Titan Vico. 
um, people are interested to know if uh, the presence of the water in the piping or in the uh, lower part of the area um, has created some problem uh, when you had to register the scan, if in a certain way the presence of water of humidity has affected the registration process. Uh, not really. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, it's if you measure above uh, yeah, the direct rain, uh, then of course. Uh, yeah, but but the clear here. is no, because the, yeah, the flow, not flow, but the down there in the, in the manifold or in the chamber, there is only not. Uh, there is water and there is moisture also, but this is uh, not. Uh, not to affect the measurements because uh, water is on the bottom on the walls yeah. is quite uh, but, uh, yeah, but something may affect if the the, the walls are uh, reflecting or very wet um, i don't know about what the water level does it give uh, uh, yeah uh, water is good give, water give does this give, uh, yeah. noise but it's not very much uh, as you see there are uh, clouds uh, maybe also can share this or see the records uh, there is a, a non-cleaned uh, point cloud and it's quite uh, clean it's uh, yeah it's uh, not clean and it's uh, noise free approximately the, where, where is the water there is a noise yes but there is a where is the uh, walls and uh, all elements there is a quite understandable where it is and where at least in our case, it had not massive effect that that could that could affect our our mm -hmm. job. But outside, if you have direct rain drops in the air, then of course it has an effect. Yeah, yeah, we have... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like like a, a also a static laser scanner because I think it's, a, it's it's the same condition. If you have a deep rain or something like that, of course. Uh, it can affect the, the, the acquisition. And uh, people have another question uh, um, for you that is uh, um, uh, if you have used Aeron Light Color also in other application, of course, I would say, <laughs> if you can just uh, provide uh, general information because I know that this uh, answer is long just to give an idea of the application in which you have used Aeron Light. There is also a question, maybe. Uh, we have used, uh, uh, very much we use it the outside of the buildings uh, to do uh, topographic surveys, because there is, uh, we try to use uh, uh, drone data and uh, hair on light data together because the drone data have uh, uh, not have hole coverage on the sites and there is uh, holes coming uh, in on the point cloud uh, above us, trees and uh, the roofs and so on and there we use uh, hair on light to get the whole pretty point cloud on the site. The primary equipment to, to acquire uh, topographic data is is uh, photogrammetric method uh, and the cameras on the drones but if there is a canopy and there are places we cannot access we can do not get data then uh, heron light is used like a survey guide but not with a prism or or, or, or rtk but with heron and we get the data uh, down uh, uh, lower the canopy and all other hidden places from, from the aerial camera. Okay, so also um, coming back to how you had registered the data, um, I mean, people like to know how it is possible to align the model um, like uh, from the right, right direction because the system has not uh, have a compass. Uh, it is not have an inclinometer, of course, uh, but uh, um, I think that perhaps is not clear because we did not say that uh, Aeron has got an inertial system inside. We integrate LiDAR, camera and IMU. And so for this reason, we can provide the uh, general uh, um, 
how to say, the general orientation, then as uh, Vico and Tit explained, we can reference the data using uh, control points, but uh, the system uh, integrates also an, uh, an IM, uh, IMU, sorry, an inertial system. I just underline this because uh, uh, we did not explain that uh, in the Aeron there is also uh, IMU, an inertial system. Uh, and yes, an inertial system integrated. Mm -hmm. And also, maybe to better understand, in, in the video, there is on, only underground part of the here on point cloud, but we measure also above ground and underground, and above ground we have orientation and uh, coordinate points, and uh, uh, over that we coordinate uh, this uh, orientation of the uh, well. Now this uh, survey map uh, was a reference to get uh, uh, the orientation uh, or alignment uh, and the right orientation. Okay, okay. Um, then um, I think that uh, we have reached out our time and I think that we had uh, many interested questions of course uh, if uh, you might have other um, question provide us your question we me Vico and Tit would be pretty pleased to provide more details on that so um, I think that we come to the end I really want to thank you again Vico and Tit uh, for this uh, nice uh, uh, meeting even uh, we cannot stay together. I hope that in the near future we could have the chance also to organize something, I mean, uh, all together physically. And uh, um, I take the chance also to wish uh, to all of you guys Merry Christmas and uh, relaxing, I hope, and nice vacation. Um, just follow us in the next uh, webinar, follow us uh, uh, through our channels, follow also Hades Geodesia through their uh, channel because you can really discover i think and learn uh, some nice and interesting things so um if you want to know more about our pro product just uh, contact us i'd like also to uh, leave vico and tit uh, to uh, greet uh, all of you guys before leaving yeah Thank you for, for your time and I hope it was interesting and uh, we're really glad if we can share our ideas and you can find something useful to you. That means if you have questions or something, come to us and uh, via internet or, or whatever, however. Good. Thanks again, really pretty much. Vaiko and Tit, really appreciate. Uh, I am pretty sure that uh, this uh, meeting has been interesting uh, and uh, really hope to have the chance to organize another one soon so once again thank you very much uh have a nice uh, evening or day for the guys from western uh side thanks again and uh, all the best to everyone bye bye